Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today we're going to continue with our look at Dr. Lee McIntyre and how to talk to a science denier. We'll be finishing up with a final trope or characteristic common to all science deniers and that is the certainty of science. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now, Dr. McIntyre starts off this chapter with probably one of the truest quotes I've ever heard about science denial, that the only people that insist that science must be perfect are those that have never done science. Now, this quote sums up the fifth trope or characteristic of all science deniers, and that is an unrealistic expectation of what science is and is not. How many times have we heard these from the science denial community? Can you prove to me that vaccines are 100% safe and effective? Shouldn't we wait until all the evidence is in before we make up our minds on climate change? Well, if you get right down to it, the link between smoking and lung cancer has never been conclusively proven. This is an ideological motivated denial of objective reality. When it comes to dealing with the unknown, there are basically two classes of problems. There are puzzles and there are mysteries. Puzzles have all the information needed to completely solve them. Mathematics can be considered a puzzle. A mathematical proof is a definitive answer. Now in science, it's more of a mystery. We'll never know all of the information that we could possibly know about a subject. We'll know a goodly amount of it, and we'll know enough to draw some valid conclusions, but we'll never have 100% conclusive proof. Now, one of the basic tenets of science is that we can develop a hypothesis and test it, something that will let us begin to understand the world around us. However, if new data or information comes to light, we can revise our opinion and our hypothesis and try and explain it a little bit better. A good example of that is Newton and Einstein. There's a thing out in the universe called gravity. Gravity is what makes things fall down. Now, Newton had some ideas on the effects of gravity. However, along came Einstein and got a better way of describing the effects of gravity that accounted for more things. Now, does that mean that Newton is invalid? No, we use it in our regular everyday world. It works just fine. But there are certain situations that we need to employ Einstein to get a better understanding of what's going on in the universe. That's the evolution of science. It's often said that science builds upon the shoulders of giants. Science can be what you do in a laboratory. And science can also be considered the cumulative body of knowledge that mankind has amassed since we began to do science. Every scientist alive today begins by learning the work of the scientists that came before them. And then in their own way, they try and expand that knowledge. But if you get right down to it, science is a journey. It's not a destination. We learn as we go. And the way we make decisions in science is we use the best information that we have available to us. And we keep our options open to update it in the event something new comes up in the future. Science never waits for all the information to come in before making a decision. It can't. Now, the difference between science and science denial is that science understands that it's an ongoing process. Science denial tries to seize upon every possible exception to the rule, every disagreement and opinion between scientists, every advancement in science to say that there's still room for debate. We can't make up our mind yet. Now, while we can say that we want to have our options open to revise our opinion in the future, and we do do that. Now, science denial is based on a different concept of science. Under their belief, if there is any difference of opinion or any evidence that may suggest an alternative hypothesis, 
immediately that alternative hypothesis becomes a valid alternative and equal in weight to the current thinking. An example of this would be, is the Earth a globe or is the Earth flat? Well, the Earth is a globe. It's a spherical planet. How do we know this? Well, we've measured it, we've surveyed it, we've photographed it from space. It's a sphere. It's not in any doubt. The amount of evidence that backs up the fact that the Earth is a spherical planet is overwhelming. Simply saying, well, I think it's flat, or it looks flat to me, it does not put that theory on equal standing with the globe. The globe is not subject to debate. It's subject to refinement. But we're not going to wake up in 20 years and find out that the Earth is a cube or a pancake it's still going to be a globe, and it doesn't require their permission to be a globe. Now, the other problem that you run into with science denial is they'll demand this unobtainable strict proof that the Earth is a globe. But simply saying they think the Earth looks flat to them, therefore it's flat, is accepted as gospel, literally. They don't require any standard of proof for their own claims, only the claims of mainstream science. This is a classic begging the question fallacy. You make the premise that the Earth is flat, therefore the Earth is flat. It just doesn't work that way, folks. The bottom line is this double standard of evidence is completely against anything that science stands for. You can't require strict proof from one theory, yet accept another theory on face value and faith. It just doesn't work that way. Natural selection and general relativity are theories in science, but they have something called warrant behind them. Warrant means that there is a sufficient testing and evidence for us to be able to accept a theory as truth without strict proof. So despite having warrant and being accepted as a general truth, both natural selection and Einstein's theory of relativity are subject to revision or replacement if new information or data comes to light. That's the way science works. In other words, there is a rational reason to accept the evidence that validates each of these theories. And as a result, we consider them true. We do reserve the right to change our minds later, again, in the face of new evidence. Now to require that theories have a strict level of proof, you can't just restrict that to the theories that you don't agree with. You have to apply it equally to all theories. So a strict level of proof for medicine and engineering and weather forecasting. We'd never get anything done because we'll never know everything there is to know about all of these subjects. Now to go back to our original premise, are vaccines 100% safe and effective? No medicine is 100% safe and effective. If you apply that standard of logic and proof, then you wouldn't be able to use vaccines. You wouldn't be able to use heart medicine. We wouldn't be able to do engineering or forecast the weather. Now you could say that Darwin's theory of natural selection is just a theory. That's true. Intelligent design is also just a theory. You could claim that the globe Earth is a theory. Well, so is the flat Earth. But when you look at the globe Earth, we have measurements and surveys and photographs that says it's a globe. We can measure the rotation with mechanical and laser gyro compasses. Our understanding and the evidence behind the rotating spherical Earth accounts for Coriolis and the Utvos effect. It accounts for different weights by latitude. We understand all of these things based on a spherical rotating Earth. How do you explain the fact that weights change based on latitude on a flat stationary Earth. We can certainly do it on a rotating globe. Can you explain them on a flat and stationary Earth? I don't think so. Dr. McIntyre ended up this chapter with another quote from the movies, Dumb and Dumber. During that movie, the character portrayed by Jim Carrey was trying to get a beautiful woman to go out with him. She told him that there was less than a one in a million chance that she would ever go out with him. His response was, well, one in a million is a chance. If there is a one in a million chance that the Earth is not a sphere, and the overwhelming preponderance of evidence says that it is a sphere, it's true that it's not proven 
to be a globe because there's a one in a million chance it's not. But to deny it's a globe, despite all of the overwhelming evidence, because there's a one in a million chance that it's not a globe, that's not a realistic position. Don't be that guy. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. And in our next episode, we're going to look into the motivations that wrote the script for science denial. And then we're going to look at why people believe in science denial. So remember to hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, folks. Bye, 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 the science guy.